Okay, we're going to talk about SLOs 3, 4, and 5 for Chapter 16. So, SLO 3 was discussed in the previous video. That's the mechanisms of labor, or those cardinal movements, and how they become food colored. Um, so, that's SLO 3. SLO 4, two monetary signs of labor. So, how are we going to know if our patient isn't ready to go into labor? That's what the premonitory signs are. They're like uh, the warning signs before the patient goes into labor. Braxton Hicks contractions. Those are practice contractions. The patient has contractions off and on. They're there, they go away, they come back. So it's just a practice. They don't stay and get more regular. Lightning. The baby um, usually sits pretty high until it gets ready to go into labor. So in the last weeks of pregnancy, the patient will experiencing will experience lightning where the baby drops into the pelvis. It's a little bit easy for them to breathe. An energy spurt. So the patient may have an energy spurt. They have a nesting instinct. They get everything ready for the baby. They feel like they need to get their house prepared. Bloody show. So they might have an increase in vaginal secretions and bloody show. It's just meaning as their cervix is a little bit more dilated, they can break some of those blood vessels causing the mucus that is being discharged to be bloody. Um, they could also have just clear mucus um, or secretions because as the cervix is more dilated, it produces more mucus. Um, so they just might have an increase in clear mucus. And then oftentimes they'll have a weight loss of somewhere between one and three pounds right before they deliver. So in the last week of their pregnancy, a lot of times they'll have that decrease in their weight. Um, the SLO for five is how do we tell the difference between true and false labor. So we, um, when we have false labor, um, in true labor, we're comparing the contractions and the discomfort and the cervical change. So um, when you have true labor, you have regular contractions occurring at a, at a consistent pace, getting closer together. Um, they usually will increase if you increase activity, like walking. For the patient that's in false labor, usually their contractions are a little more irregular, and if they get up and move around, a lot of times activity will decrease the amount of contractions they're having. Their discomfort for real labor starts in the back, sweeps around to the lower abdomen, and it's felt more like menstrual cramps. For false labor, they tend to feel more um, abdominal pain and into the groin um, instead of that coming from the back to the front menstrual cramping feeling for true labor. The other thing we do is we check their cervix because we want to know are the contractions they're having causing their cervix to change? Are they progressively getting more dilated and are they getting more in your face? Is it thinning down the cervix? So these contractions that are true contractions do change our cervix they show progressive change. So if our patient came in and they were one centimeter and 50% effaced and um, zero station, and we recheck them after a couple hours of them walking, and they've changed their cervix to three centimeters and 90% effaced and plus one station, we would know that they have progress in their labor. If it's false labor, those patients are gonna walk around, they may have still have contractions but their service is gonna stay the same. They came in um, closed, thick and high, and when we recheck them, they're the same. So that's a way we would tell between true and false labor. 